Yes, right? Ready to try one? Mm -hmm. Letter A, letter B. Everyone wants to differentiate? Y equal to X times cosine of X. <coughs> Actually, you know what? Everyone, can I do sine of X? And letter B? <coughs> Find the equation of the tangent line drawn to the curve y equals x sub x at x equal to I think I'll try pi over 2 All right. Hey, when's our next test date? Two weeks from. Two weeks? Mm-hmm. Cool. It's tomorrow's chain rule day. All right, two weeks from now. You're on the test. Watch this. I'm afraid of when this may happen. I hope it doesn't happen. But I'm afraid it's going to happen. S-E-S-E-S, -E -S -E -S. okay. Mm-hmm. Wah, wah. Now letter V's going to get missed. And you know, you want to ace this test. I missed the concept. Plus sign That's X. wrong, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You go, why? Well, well, like the derivative sine is cosine. That's wrong. That's the derivative sine is good. That's wrong. You don't want to make this error. It's huge. What rule am I missing? The prime rule. Outstanding. Holy cow. And we've got these important rules here. Very important rules. And they're going to start emerging now. Product rule and what? Course rule. There's only one more. It's the chain rule that gets it sold one day, right? One day of the chain rule. That's a product of two different functions, just like x times e to the x we did earlier. x squared times e to the x. I must use what rule? I have to use it. No option. I have to do product rule. This is wrong. Now, how does product rule go? Let's see if you do it from memory. M times n prime, is it the plus or the minus? Oh, good. M times n prime plus n times n prime, right? Or in words, first times derivative of the second plus second yes. times derivative of the first, if you like that. First times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. All right, your first, your second. So walk me through this. First, right? This is m, this is m. m times n prime plus n times n prime. I need product. X, what's the derivative of sine of X? Good job. Plus sine, sine, sine of X. Yeah. What's the derivative of X? Just Very one. simple. Sometimes freaks people out. Derivative of X is just a one. One, one right? One thing I didn't like about this problem, I was hoping to get some negatives in there, and it didn't have any negatives in it. I should have did cosine, because then what's the derivative of cosine of x? You know, because I'm okay with minus signs and stuff. Good. Well, there's the answer letter A. Right? There it is. And when I would write this as nice and clean, x cos x plus sine of x. Now, would you try letter B? Here we go again. Equation of the tangent line drawn to the curve. Y minus y sub 1. M times x minus x sub 1. Which one of these letters means derivative? M. There's your M. So that's this thing, huh? But 
How do I find the associated y1 value? At pi, two, pi over 2. Remember this, Amber? How do I get the y with this? Because there's x. That'll go there. How do I get the y1? I've got to plug this into the what? X the original, is. right? So in what is, try this, pi over 2 times sine of pi over 2. You go, I don't know sine of pi over 2. Look That's yeah, you one. Do. The unit circle thing, remember? Mm -hmm. Remember the Charlie Sheen thing? <laughs> you remember this? That one, pi over 2. What's the sine of pi over 2? 1. Well, right? Charlie Sheen. Sine power 2 is 1. So what is pi over 2 times sine power 2? So what is x1 going to be? Pi over 2. Let me put this off to the side. At x power 2, y is also pi over 2. Pi over 2. Because look, pi over 2 times sine of pi over 2 is pi over 2 times a 1. Cool. So let me put that here, your pi over 2. Your power of 2. Alright. How do I get that? You just plug in pi over 2 at the y prime. I used the slope, but I don't squeeze this whole thing in there. You know, do I jam that in there? No. What are you going to evaluate this at? So Josephine, here's the slope, right? At pi over 2. Mm -hmm. I'll take all this, and he goes, you'll evaluate it at pi over 2. x equal to pi over 2. Oh, would you plug a pi over 2 through that whole thing? Mm -hmm. So you get... Um, you get pi over 2. We'll take a nice and slow one. m equals y prime equals pi over 2 times cos of pi over 2 plus sine of pi over 2. Well, what's the sine of pi over 2? 1. What's the cos... Oh, I just erased the unit circle. Zero. Is it 0? So what's 0 times anything? So what's y prime equal to? 0 plus 1 is? That's a nice slope, isn't it? Now that unit circle will help you out, right? Unless you got other ways to remember this stuff. 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Charlie Sheen, Charlie Sheen, Charlie Sheen, Charlie Sheen. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, but the sine of pi over 2 is 1, right? What's the radian angle over here? Uh, pi, right? Yeah, I mean, so, well, I need the cosine of pi. Negative 1, sine of pi, 0, right? But anyways, that's the answer. Now, this would be full credit. But I have a feeling someone in here can make that look really pretty. Y equals to X. <laughs> Do you all see it? Now, full credit for this, for all I know, like, can I leave the answer? You sure can leave an answer like this. But you might study it and go, wait a minute, I can really pretty this one up. Because you would just add what to both sides? Pi over 2. So everyone add a pi over 2 on both sides. Just shoot that one, look what you get. I'll put or. Josephine, do you see that? I want you to see this. Look at this. So there, I get the slope in there. I get the slope from the derivative of this, plugging in pi over twos. I know it gets a little weird, but I just use the unit circle to plug those numbers in there, right? Starts popping up in a lot now. I just add a pi over two on that side. And you get an x minus pi over two plus a pi over two. What's the equation of the line? You know that line. It's just a 45 degree angle, right? Cool. Hey, is this the one you can check with the calculator? Yep. No one agree? Doesn't your calculator find the tangent line? Is that something you can check with those tools? It might say y equals 1.000004x, but it would work, right? That would a super job with all this stuff. Just like really good. Anything just before we leave here with 3-3. Three, three. Uh, looking here, is there any good ones? Nope, 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 nope. Okay. I'm on the last problem number eight. Does that work? We got the three, three. Last problem number eight. Can I raise this? Go ahead and cross one like that on the next test. Yeah, Josephine. Good.
Professor, you're not going to do like uh, hyperbola, cosine? Oh, that's coming up in section 3.6, I think. Okay. It's in chapter 3. Chapter 3, okay. Anybody, oh. if there's something called hyperbolic trig functions. Have you ever heard of those? Mm -hmm. They have nothing to do with trig. <laughs> hyperbolic. <laughs> I know, hyperbolic. Cosine, they put an H after the cosine. They write cosh. Cosh X. Art's heard of them. Anybody else? I, I look at the hands. They've heard of these, the hyperbolic trig functions. And when this is the last problem, can you find the derivative? Cosine X over the EX. What rule are you going to use? Close. Oh, my God. Low D high is it plus or a minus? Minus. Low D high minus high D low over low low. All right, what's the derivative of an EDX, Amber? EDX. What's the derivative of a cosine, though? Negative sign. Cosine's a negative sign. So we're going to roll it out. Low D high minus high D low. Chose this problem, everyone. The reason I chose this is the denominator. I want to see how we could write that low low. E to, e to, e to the e to x. All right, low. What's the derivative of high? Negative well, sine x. I want to be careful with your writing when you write stuff like this, and you don't put parentheses because that may look like you just wrote e to the x subtract sine of x, right? No, that's e to the x times a what? times the negative sine of x, so be, be careful with that. Now minus high. Cosine x. And what's d low? D I love it. All over now, low low. We said we just take this thing and you want. Mm -hmm. You'll get comfortable with this if you didn't know this. You will, I promise you, because this will come up daily. E to the x squared means e to the x times e to the x. And Back in algebra days, you add these powers. So what's an x plus an x? You'll get comfortable with this. Write this denominator as e to the 2x. So e to the x times e to the x. You'll just say e to the 2x. Hey, uh, now this is what I'm going to do. I want you to look at this closely. There's a negative e to the x sine of x. See where I put the minus now? You go to the front. Then there's a minus e to the x cosine x. I'm staying organized, like e to the x's and then trig functions. I would really, really, really love it if you simplified that. Because can't you factor something out? Yep. E to the x. Factor on e to the x, and won't that cancel with something? Negative e to the over x. Remember, it was over e to the x times an e to the x, right? Yep. In fact, I'll write it backwards like that. When there's low low, there's my low low. What will happen to one of these when you factor it out? Mm -hmm. Factor out a minus, what do you left with in the parentheses? Sine of x plus a what? Cosine of x. All right, slash them. There's your final answer. What is it? Minus sine x. And I'll leave that. Is that one okay if I just leave that minus out in front? <laughs> I'm going to leave it out front of parentheses there, Josephine. I won't even distribute it. Negative sine of x plus cosine of x all over EX. But there's no trig on any for that, so I can't do anything more fancy than that. Can everyone see that? Or is that wall in the way? Can you see it, Sarah? I see it. I see it, but can, if we just leave it on the first one, we just point off? Yep, it would be like minus one probably. I'd be so happy you did this because we always want to write these in simplified form. Sometimes we try to factor. It's like, oh, nothing came out of it. This one, because it had the EDX, it could factor out. This got way better. Okay. But it'd be like, it wouldn't be huge. I mean, man, she did the whole thing right. Because you'll want it for chapter four later on when we factor this one. Everyone, great job. Well, Peter Mars, chain rule.